ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ومن اتبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد to proceed indeed from the greatest principles of this deen of al islam is a concept of an nasiha and that is as the salaf rahimahumullah explained iradatul khairi lil mansuh that it is to intend and to want good for the one who is being advised which is the reason why when allah azza wa jalla sent nuh alayhi salam he addressed his people and said uballighukum risalati rabbi wa ansahu lakum that indeed i communicate to you the message of my lord and i advise you sincerely and thereafter as allah azza wa jalla mentioned in surah al araf hud alayhi salam addressed his people and said uballighukum risalati rabbi wa ana lakum nasihun amin indeed i communicate to you the message that my lord has obligated upon me wa ana lakum nasihun I mean, and did he, indeed I am to you, Nasihun, an advisor who is Amin, trustworthy. And similarly, as in the hadith of Tamim ibn Al Sadari, radiyallahu in, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, well known, Adinu nasihatun, Adinu nasihatun, Adinu nasihatun. Three times he repeated the same statement that indeed this deen is nasihatun. It is sincere advice. They questioned, Liman ya Rasulullah, to whom, O Messenger of Allah, and he said, Lillahi. Wali kitabihi, wali rasulihi, wali a'immatil muslimin wa'amatihim. It is for Allah, for his book, for his messenger, for the generality of the people and for their leaders. These five matters he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explain are the deserving recipients of your sincerity. So how do we understand an nasiha with regards to one particular matter that we want to address today? And that is an nasiha to relating to the state of the believer in relation to, in relation to their health and well-being. And this is of particular importance when an individual assumes responsibility for others. For indeed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsihi and in the hadith in Ahmed he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la yablughu al-abdu haqiqat al-iman hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsihi min al-khayri these two ahadith explain this noble principle that an extension of al-iman and its correctness is that you love for your brother that which you love for yourself if that is the obligation upon you with regards to those who are distant in relation to those who are close such as in the ayah in Surah Tahreem, where Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, qu anfusakum, save yourselves and your family from a fire, 
whose fuel is men and stones. So the obligation upon a Muslim with regards to those who are distant is that he must love for them that which he loves for himself min al khayri from good matters. Similarly, when an individual assumes the responsibility of his family, of his spouse and his children, then there is a greater obligation upon him to intend good for them and to guide them to that which will benefit them in this world and in the hereafter. So, what are those matters that will benefit an individual in the life of this world that will facilitate his path of success in the hereafter? It is that you worship Allah upon a state of Tawheed, that you acquire knowledge and understanding of these matters, that you study the Arabic language, that you learn Al-Quran, the book of Allah, that you adhere to the Sunnah. And similarly, from that point, from those principles, is that you take care of yourself and your condition, your physical state. And as I mentioned, when an individual assumes the responsibility for his family and his children, then this sense of wanting good for them and directing them to all that will benefit them and averting them from all that will harm them assumes a greater sense of urgency and you have a greater responsibility. And sometimes we can only affect a change upon those who are close to us. As Musa alayhi salam said, قَالَ رَبِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ إِلَّا نَفْسِي وَأَخِي my Lord, indeed, I cannot control except myself and my brother. So when an individual assumes the status of being a parent and he has children, then in certain instances, he really cannot affect a change upon anybody except those who are the closest to him, in particular, his children. So just as Ibrahim Alayhi salam, when he said, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When Allah Azza wa Jalla said to Ibrahim alayhi salam, أَسْلِمْ Enter into Al-Islam in totality, قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He said, I demonstrate my submission to the Lord of Al-Alameen. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَقُوبُ and upon that way, upon that advice, Ibrahim alayhi salam advised and counseled his sons, as did Yaqub alayhi salam. Which is the reason why, when death came to Yaqub, am kuntum shuhada idh hadra Yaqub al mawtu when he death came to Ibrahim alayhi salam, he gathered his children. And he said, مَا تَعْبَدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قَالُوا نَعْبُدُ إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَائِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِلَاهًا وَاهِدًا That we will worship your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers, Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, إِلَاهًا wahid. And he indeed is a single Lord, a single God. The point being is that Ibrahim السلام, and Yaqub and those who followed them upon this way, when death came to them, they would gather their children and they would counsel them that they should worship Allah alone after their departure from the life of this world. It was sincere advice of the parent towards his children. What we want to speak about is an extension of that sincere advice. The next step after worshipping Allah upon Tawheed, after following the Sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, what do we speak about next? Or what is most neglected amongst the people, particularly in our time? It is the principle mentioned in the Hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh, collected in the Sahih of Al-Imam Muslim, 
where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mu'min, Al-Qawiyyu, Khayrun, Wa ahabbu ila Allahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if, Wa fi kullin khayr, That indeed, the believer who is strong, is better and more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jalla than the believer who is weak and in both there is good. As the ulama Ahlul Ilm explain that the meaning of Al-Mu'min Al-Qawi is the believer who is strong first in Al-Iman and in Al-Ilm knowledge and thereafter Fil Badani in body, in physical stature. The reason being is because being strong and being healthy and having power are a means of facilitating your worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Those are the matters that will assist you in times of difficulty after Al-Iman and after Al-Ilm, in times of difficulty when those who oppose you have surrounded you in order for you to repel them and continue steadfast upon the worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that is a great fadila virtue in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So consider the incident that Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah concerning the Israelites who had been expelled from their homes, whose property had been taken, whose people had been enslaved and killed wrongfully and unlawfully. When they wanted a means of defending themselves and repelling their enemy and returning back to their homes, they asked their prophet to appoint for them a king from with whom they would then oppose their enemy. They would fight back. He alayhi salam said to them that in Allah qad ba'atha lakum taluta malika that indeed Allah has selected for you talut alayhi salam as your king at first they objected they said anna yakunu lahu al-mulk alayna wa nahnu haqqu bil-mulk minhu wa lam yutasa'at min al-mal they said how can he be appointed a king over us when Neither is he from a noble lineage, nor has he been granted any amount of wealth. He said to them that indeed Allah has appointed him. وَزَادَهُ بَسْتَةً فِي الْإِلْمِ وَالْجِسْمِ That indeed Allah has sent him and he has strengthened him. فِي الْإِلْمِ In knowledge and in stature al jism وَاللَّهُ يُتِّي مُلْقَهُ مَنْ يَشَعُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعُ عَلِيمٌ Indeed Allah, He gives His mulk to whomsoever He wants and indeed Allah is wasiun alim. Allah is the one whose knowledge and wisdom is expensive. The point to note is that the kingship and the kingdom of Talut alayhi salam was not founded in a noble lineage, nor was it established in wealth and property, but rather it was founded upon his knowledge and the strength in his body that he would use in order to rally the Israelites and then to go and fight against their enemy. That was from the fadila, the virtue that Allah Azza wa Jalla placed upon him. And towards the end of that incident that Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned, وَقَتَلَ دَاوُدُ جَالُوتَ That Dawood alayhi salam killed Jalut. And then towards the end, وَلَوْ لَا دَفْءُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضْ لَفَسَدَتِ الْأَرْضِ that if Allah Azza wa Jalla had not sent one group of people to oppose another group, لَفَسَدَتِ الْأَرَضِ Then indeed this earth would have become surrounded, covered in facade, in corruption and mischief by the transgressors. And similarly in Surah Al-Hajj, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned, وَلَوْ لَا دَفْءُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضِ لَهُدِّمَتْ That if Allah had not repelled one group of people with another, لَهُدِّمَتْ سَوَامِ then monasteries would have been destroyed. Wabiun and churches, wa salawatun and synagogues, wa masajidu and mas yudhkaru fi husmallahu khatira. Indeed, in which Allah's name is mentioned frequently. Similarly, when the men who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated, he said, Ya Rasulullah, 
Ara'ayta in ja'a rajul yuridu akhdha mali. He said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you say about a man who comes yuridu akhdha mali? He wants to take my wealth. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fala tuti'hi malik. Do not give him your wealth. Consider this incident. It occurs throughout this earth on a regular basis. An individual comes, a transgressor, they call him a mugger or a robber or a thief and so on and so forth. Yuridu akhda malik and he wants to take your wealth. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Fala tuti'hi malik, do not give him your wealth. Do not give him your wallet, your possessions, your mobile phone, and so on and so forth. So the man question, Ya Rasulullah, ara'ayta in qatalani, O Messenger of Allah, what do you say if he should now fight against me? Qala qatilhu, then fight against him, he was told. Ara'ayta in qatalani, qala fa'anta shaheed. He said, what do you say if he should kill me? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَأَنْتَ shaheed." Then you are a martyr. In order to repel a transgressor, or the one who wants to take your possessions, your property, or to harm you, or your family, that will not be actualized. It will not be made manifest, except by the one who is, or has the ability to defend himself, and has some form of power and strength. It will not become manifest in somebody who is weak. So it's incumbent upon a believer, therefore, that he should strive to assume this characteristic. And in addition to that, a believer is the one who adheres to the book and the sunnah. And all that is contained in the book and the sunnah with regards to a command, it is good for a believer. And all that is contained in the book and the sunnah in relation to a prohibition, it is to avert the believer from harm. Which is the reason why Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, innama al-khamru wal-maysaru wal-ansabu wal-azlamu ridsun min amali shaytani fajtanibuhu. O you who believe, indeed, al-khamru, intoxicants, and gambling, and the other matters, ridsun min amali shaytan, they are, from the evil abominations of the shaitan, فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ So avoid it, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ So in order that you may be successful. When they were questioned, they would question, Ya Rasulullah, they would question, يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا أُحِلَّ لَهُمْ قُلْ أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ الطَّيِّبَاتِ They would question, Ya Rasulullah, what has been made lawful for us? And Allah Azza wa Jalla told him to say that indeed that which is good and pure has been made lawful for you. So a believer who strives and struggles to adhere to the command and avoid the prohibition and eat from that which is good and lawful and pure and avoid that which is impure and harmful, then he should be in a state afterwards to show something for all that he is here adhered to and all that he has avoided. It's not befitting, it's not appropriate after that for a believer to have become weak and feeble except that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has decreed. But a person who was healthy, who had no physical disability, who had no inherent weakness, then he should not have abused himself and caused himself to enter into a situation in which he was weak after abstaining from all that Allah Azza wa Jalla had declared impermissible. And thereafter, we advise the people and I advise my family and my children that Allah Azza wa Jalla has demonstrated to us the effects of weakness in Al-Quran and in the Sunnah. Consider when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Tilka rusulu faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. Indeed, the messengers, we 
preferred some over others with regards to certain attributes. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Minhum man kallam Allah wa rafa ba'dhum darajat wa atina Isa ibn Maryam al bayyinat wa ayyadna hu bi ruh al Qudus." That indeed some of them we gave certain characteristics or attributes that others did not have. So Isa alayhi salam was assisted by Jibreel alayhi salam. Some of whom Allah spoke to directly, some whom Allah raised over others. One particular attribute or characteristic that certain messengers were favored with and not others was that Allah strengthened them and gave them power beyond that of an ordinary person. So here is the Musa alayhi salam by the testimony of one of the two sisters that Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah Al-Qasas. She said, Ya abati sta'jir, O oh my father, hire this man, inna khayra man sta'jir tal qawiyu al-ameen. Indeed, the best of those whom you can hire is al qawiyu al aminu the one who is strong and the one who is trustworthy. Harun alayhi salam, as in the testimony of his own brother Musa alayhi salam, he said, وَأَرْسِلْ مَعِيَ هَارُونَ And send with me Harun alayhi salam. قَالَ رَبِّ هُوَ أَفْسَهُ مِنِّي لِسَانَ He said, my Lord, he is more eloquent upon uh, his tongue in his speech than I am. So send him with me in order that he can strengthen me. So here were two prophets of Allah Azza wa Jalla. One of them had been favored with one attribute and the other one with a different one. So when Musa alayhi salam appointed Harun as his Khalifa after him and he ascended the mountain in order to receive revelation, the Israelites revolted, they rebelled, they took a golden calf and they started to worship it. And when Musa alayhi salam returned, and he saw what they had done. He had grabbed his brother by his beard. And as Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf and Surah Taha, قَالَ بْنَ أُمَّ إِنَّ الْقَوْمِ إِسْتَضْعَفُونِي وَكَادُوا يَقْتُلُونَنِي He said, Oh, the son of my mother. Indeed, the people إِسْتَضْعَفُونِي They considered me, perceived me to be a weak person. وَكَادُوا يَقْتَلُونَنِي And they were on the verge of killing me. They themselves, the Israelites, when Harun alayhi salam warned them not to do this, they said, قَالُوا لَنْ نَبْرَحَ عَلَيْهِ آقِفِينَ حَتَّى يَرْجِعَ إِلَيْنَا مُوسَى They said, indeed, we will never stop worshipping this calf until Musa alayhi salam returns to us. As soon as he returned, they stopped. He took the calf, he burnt it, and he spread the ashes in the sea. And there was not a single one amongst the Israelites or a group of them or all of them who opposed them in doing that. Not a single one of them opposed him. Why? Because clearly they were afraid of Musa alayhi salam. This man who was al qawi who had al quwa strength and power, in a way that they were simply not afraid of Harun alayhi salam. And the incident well known when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was praying in the Kaaba, in the, around the Kaaba, and Abu Jahl, wa ashabun lahu jalusun, and Abu Jahl and his companions, they were sat there too. And then he announced, who amongst you will go to uh, so and so a place who are just nuherat jazurun, who are just uh, sacrificed a camel, who will go and bring the entrails of it and then place it upon the back of Muhammad idha sajada when he goes into sujood. So the worst of them went. He went to that place, he took the insides of this camel, he returned, he placed them upon the back of the Prophet وسلم, and it is Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu and said, and I was looking at what they were doing. Lokanat Li Mana'atun 
that if I had had the ability, the power in order to stop them and to remove that which they had placed upon the back of the Prophet وسلم, then indeed I would have done that. So consider therefore the consequences of weakness we know that some of them were favoured over others with certain characteristics. And this is not intended to be a means of exposing a weakness of any of the companions because they are the best of those who followed any of the messengers but the point to note is that Ibn Masood radiallahu an had a characteristic and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an had a different one. And when Umar ibn al-Khattab aslama, when he entered into al-Islam, then it had strengthened the believers in a way that nobody else had entered into Islam before him had strengthened them. Why? Because now they could pray around the Kaaba and there was no one to oppose them. And that is a matter that is well known. So it's not intended to be a criticism. Its intent is to explain that al that strength and power, it affords an individual the ability to perform an action that the one who is weaker cannot do. Which is why, as Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah Hud, when the people came to Hud alayhi salam and they wanted to force themselves upon his guest. That was the reality of what they wanted to do. What did he say, alayhi salam? Lo anna kana li, lo anna kana li bikum quwah, or are we ila ruqn shadeed? He said, if only I had power over you, or I had the support of a strong group. He too, alayhi salam, wanted to have the power in order to oppose the people who had come towards him. Alayhim as salam. Thereafter, there is another very serious consequence to weakness that Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in numerous ayat in Al Quran. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned, Wa barazu lillahi jami'a that indeed all of them barazu, they will be displayed before Allah Azza wa Jalla on Yawm Al Qiyamah. فَقَالَ الضُّعَفَاءُ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكَبَرُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا لَكُمْ تَبْعًا Then those who were weak, du'afa, the plural of da'if, will say to those istakbaru, those who were proud and haughty, and showed their strength, they will say, Inna kunna lakum taban. Indeed, we used to follow you, meaning in the life of this world. So this is Yom Al Qiyamah, but we used to follow you in the life of this world. So now on this day, can you take some of Adabillah from the punishment Allah for us? Because we used to follow you. And in Surah Ghafir, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned, and when they dispute and argue with one another in the fire, فَقَالَ الدُّعَفَاءُ فَيَقُولُ الدُّعَفَاءُ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا لَكُمْ تَبَعًا فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُغْنُونَ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ النَّارِ Then those who are weak will say to those who are strong that because we used to follow you, can you now take a portion of the fire for one day for us? The point to note in these two ayat is that who will ask who for what and for what reason? The du'afa will ask those lilladhina stakabaru, those who are proud and haughty. The weak will ask the proud and the haughty that now because we followed you, will you take some of the punishment that Allah Azza wa Jalla has placed upon us now? And of course, their response will be no, because we can't avert it from ourselves and we're not going to be able to avert it from you. But the point to note is consider how people are in this world. From when we are young at school until we become older, it's a characteristic of human beings that the poor and the weak 
and the oppressed. They follow those who are the strong and the powerful, the rich, the wealthy, those who are arrogant. It's unfortunately a characteristic of the people of this world. So a child at school, who does he follow? The one who is weak follows the school or the class bully. The one who goes out and he walks in a particular way and he talks in a particular fashion and he imposes himself upon others. The child follows that example. But if the child is raised upon the book and the sunnah with an understanding of who it is that they worship and why and that's coupled with developing the Iman in order that it can be made manifest upon the tongue and in the limbs then that's a means of protection for that child and it ought to be encouraged it ought to be something that's facilitated so the purpose of this introduction and what will follow is to introduce a few basic exercises and training routines that an individual can follow within the comfort of their own home in order to bring about the good from their observance of the deen and to avert the harm that will make uh, and will develop their worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla. because everything that follows its purpose is in order to perfect your worship of Allah so you strengthen your body you strengthen your legs your arms your back your chest all of these aspects of your physical state are strengthened for the worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla alone and that will be explained in more detail in the following uh, tutorials ta'ala. but we wanted to mention this by way of an introduction as a nasiha, a sincere advice and as I mentioned at the beginning that if this advice does not affect anybody save my own children as Musa alayhi salam said qala rabbi la amliku illa nafsi wa akhi my lord indeed I do not control anybody except myself and my own brother. If this advice does not affect except my own children, that they grow up recognizing this obligation to strengthen their bodies as they have to strengthen their heart with the knowledge and al-Iman, then that would have been an endeavor that was worthwhile. And to conclude a note that the purpose of strength and power is not to walk upon this earth in a proud and haughty manner like the people of Ard. Ma'ad, as Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah Fussilat, istakbaru fil ard. They were arrogant and haughty upon this earth. Waqalu man ashaddu minna quwa. And they said, who ashaddu minna quwa? They said, who is more powerful than us? Even though Allah Azza wa Jalla was the one who had empowered and strengthened them. وَيَزِدْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ As their Prophet Hud alayhi salam told them that that would be a favor of Allah upon them if they sought forgiveness from Allah and sought sincere repentance. يَزِدْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ But they turned it against their prophet and they rebelled against Allah and they said وَمَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةً Who is more powerful than us? أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ شَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً Did they not see that Allah Azza wa Jalla who created them He was more powerful than them? So the purpose, the intent, the reason of this strengthening is not in order to be proud and haughty and depress others rather it is in order to help the creation whether they be a Muslim or a non-Muslim it is in order to assist the people أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين فاستغفروه إنه هو الجواد الكريم